vlog pose here with talking about Future Diary Episode 6. Okay, so this one I liked a lot more than Episode 5. Um, like, you, like I said, um, Episode 5, there were definitely some issues with the, that episode with characters' motives and some things just didn't make sense. So at least this one made a lot more sense. Okay. So the episode starts off, and you have Yuno breaking into Yuki's house. She has a mallet, she puts some tape over the window to, uh, to um, cancel out the noise a little bit and maybe catch the shattered glass, I, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, then it goes to Yuki and he's waiting at a, I don't know if it's a train station or a bus station or an airport or whatever. Um, and he says, if I would have known she was going to be late, then uh, then I wouldn't have come right at four or whatever. And um, so then uh, then it goes to a taxi, and you're hearing this woman's voice, and you're thinking, okay, who's this? And this lady's poking at his face and everything and hugging on him, and a little strange. Uh, and it turns out to be his mother. Uh, I know that one of the things she was saying was, um, has there been a girl that's made my boy a man yet? I thought, what mother speaks like that? And then, uh, while that's all going on, you have the taxi driver, and he's just looking in the rearview mirror, looking back at them, and smiling, and thought, what are you looking at, creep? <laughs> so yeah, um, that was going on. And then they get back to Yuki's house, and, uh, his mom immediately notices, uh, was that glass shattered when you left? And then he looks at his phone, sees that Yuno's in his house, uh, oh, yep, that was me, I was roughhousing and I accidentally broke the window, my bad, I'm gonna go upstairs and get ready to eat. So he runs upstairs and Yuno's cleaning his room, and he's like, what are you doing, you can't be here? No, I want to meet your mom. So he shoves her in the closet, and, um, his mom gets up there and he's got his hands on the closet like this and oh yeah I'm just uh, working out nothing to see here I mean come on if there are any teenagers watching this that doesn't work you need to, you need to be a little bit more subtle about these things don't be obvious if you're trying to hide something don't be Yuki so um Anyway, uh, she's in his room because she's noticing, wow, you cleaned and you made food downstairs, you made some lunch, uh, although you were stupid to leave it on while you're waiting on me because you're home alone, oh, yeah, I'm still getting used to this whole uh, cooking thing, and, uh, you know, it's like, let me out of the closet, and uh, the mom's like, whoa, I heard a girl's voice, and Oh, it was just the wind. Um, and so anyway, he's arguing with Yuno through the closet, and um, his mom's definitely catching on to this. She says, "Don't, don't try to hide your little girlfriend from me." Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And uh, I like Yuno's line where she says, "It's time for me to pop out and say hi, mom." For some reason, I just thought that line was hilarious. Uh, anyway, um, she's pushing. And he's trying to push back, and he's not doing too good, so eventually he has to grab his mom and does some weird spinny thing and throw her out the door and lock the door behind him. And then, uh, only anime can make that work. Because it looked really stupid, but in real life that would look so stupid. Anyway. Um, then Yuki turns around and notices that Yuno has found, um, uh, some magazines under his bed, and is wondering why he still has them, or why he has them in the first place. Um, so of course Yuki grabs that, and as he's going like this, the magazine flips open, and his mom happens to walk back in to see that kind of magazine. She's, uh, she's... What are you doing with that? <laughs> so, uh, of course, typical 
anime slice of life. It's another slice of life type of episode. It's it's not very action packed, but there's a lot of awkward and hilarious moments that only anime can give. So then they're all eating because it was Yuno who ended up uh, cooking, which makes sense. We learned a couple episodes ago that uh, she grew apples in her backyard, or grew that apple in her backyard, and uh, living. Uh, that kind of lifestyle, you kind of learn to pick up on some cooking stuff. Basically, his, um, his mom loved her cooking and thought, "Oh, well, you should, you should get, you guys should get married." And uh, so they were talking about marriage and traditional and modern weddings and stuff. And Yuki's like, "I hate my life." And then later on in the evening. They're looking at baby photos of Yuki, and he's like, I'm naked in all these. It's like, oh, shut up. It's not that big of a deal. You're just a baby. and um, Yeah. Well, uh, his mom was describing that she needs to uh, stick around for a few days, because I guess she works in a different city or whatever, works weird hours, but she's going to have a couple days of leave, because one of her co-workers... Were involved, were involved in the Omakata cult uh, massacre, which was uh, Subaki uh, sixth uh, thing. They decided to pass off the uh, the incident as just oh, cult members went crazy and slaughtered each other, which makes more sense than crazy pink-haired girl with diary that foresees the future. Uh, that doesn't make as much sense and probably wouldn't fly as well on the news and on media other than, oh, crazy cold kill, e kill each other? Well, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, meanwhile, we get a little bit of uh, what's going on with Ninth, and she's talking to a doctor who gives her a glass eye. So there's a, a moment where uh, he gives her the glass eye and she's trying to get it all situated. So there's a one point where her eyes are going in different directions. That's kind of funny. Um, and she says, when did you take up babysitting? He says, oh, well, those are the victims of the Omakata cult. Yeah, so uh, children that lost their parents in the massacre, I don't know, maybe they were there, maybe they, maybe these children saw, you know, kill their parents, I don't know. Maybe they were hypnotized too. Well, hope that doesn't turn into anything. Uh... There was one line that the doctor said that kind of weirded me out, where he says, well, not really, not really weirded me out, but just kind of a strange line for a doctor to say. And he says, this is a legit uh, doctor's office two-thirds of the time. So you wonder, what is it the other third of the time? Is it possibly drugs? Like all that prescription stuff? Maybe they're selling... I don't know. I don't know what he means by that. But something that... Um, some kind of continuity error that I did notice when he was giving her the glass eye she she had her eye kinda whereas in the previous episode Twelfth had her eye in a jar so that made no sense so that, that was probably my biggest issue with this episode was just how do you have your eye when you had your eye pulled out in the previous episode um, anyway, then it goes to the, the evening, and, uh, his mom says, oh, well, it's too late for you to walk home, so you're just gonna stay here tonight. She's like, okay, and, um, so she sets up the futon in Yuki's room of all places. Yuki says, there are other places that you could put her for the night, and she's all, oh, stop being so chivalrous, and, um... <laughs> Something else that his mom says that is not what moms would typically say would be, um, she was saying, uh, I don't care what goes on, just keep it down and keep it covered. But really? You're encouraging that kind of behavior for a 14-year-old? I mean, mo yeah, okay, most 14-year-olds be like, yeah, all right, but in reality, that's horrible parenting. Like, yeah, that, that's just horrible parenting. I understand that Yuki's mom really likes her, but that's not how you would show... That's not how you would show that. It, it, it's 
no, it's just wrong on so many levels. But at least for the anime goes, it makes it a pretty hilarious moment, full of awkward teenage stuff. Uh, there was a, a scene where uh, Yuno was in the shower and uh, his mom was talking to her outside the, the door saying, hey, I left a, some dry clothes and stuff. Okay, you're the awesomest mom ever. And um, she's, she's saying, oh, um, uh, keep an eye on my Yuki or be good to my Yuki. He's, he's worth it or, or something uh, as she walks away. And um, this... Uh, this, well, when Yuno was in that that one moment, she looked different. Maybe I think it was just the hair, um, but she just looked so different. Because I'm, I guess I'm used to it kind of flaring out, the hair flaring out a little bit or whatever. And it was, but um, she says, "His mom is so great," and then it flashes like flashbacks to her parents or like the dead. Yeah. Um, don't want to spoil things, but it, it does like little flashback things, and then her eyes just narrow, like the pupils go all narrow. <laughs> That's frightening. It it that's definitely one of the other mental images from Future Diary that sticks with you is Yuno's eyes in that one scene. Just it it just happens so quick. You're like, oh, what does that mean? <laughs> um. Oh, so then. Then it goes to the the bad time or whatever, and they're laying down, and you know it's like, you gonna put the moves on me? No. And she's like, well, it's gonna happen. And she shows Yuki the phone where it, they were talking about the July twenty eighth, as I mentioned in the previous episode. She says we're gonna we're gonna it's gonna happen. You can try to prevent it all you want, but it's still gonna happen. He's like, well, okay, but I'm I'm just gonna go to bed now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> His mom said, "Good luck storm the castle, or have fun storm the castle." Uh, just, uh, I, I just remembered that line. So yeah, it it was awkward stuff. The two of them were having the talk. You naturally, naturally, you know, wanted uh, them to fool around, and Yuki was um, too afraid to. And most of that came from why did I look in that room? Because he admits she is really cute, but he also knows she's not stable. She's not mentally stable. So that's um that's probably his biggest conflict right now is just do I like her, do I not like her? She's cute, but she's crazy. Yeah, um, so that was, then it goes to the next day, and they hear the car door, so yeah, we got to meet this little child, and, um, he's like, what's your name, big brother, big sister, and they're introducing themselves, and he's got puppets on his hands, he's like, face hug, and so that was cute, um, uh, until he goes inside, and he's like, face hug, and he's like smashing these puppet faces together, and yeah okay um so then then the he's uh got crayons and he's drawing turns out he's drawing you know's face or whatever and very cute five year old drawing and uh then then he starts cutting her out and there's one angle of him cutting out the the drawing of you know that it looks like he's actually cutting through the face but I think it's just the angle of the animation uh, thing um, so he cuts out a circle and um, he looks over at Yuno and he wants to run around to give it to her or whatever and he still has the scissors in his hand and he, as he runs he uh, uh, trips on the rug and goes flying and, and looks like that he just stabbed Yuno fortunately uh, she had a pillow uh, that was protecting her naturally. Uh, Yuki's mom was freaking out of, oh, oh, that that's not good. And um, she says, oh no no, it, it's okay. Um, but your pillow's not. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And then naturally his mom's scolding him, don't run with scissors ever again. That's dangerous. Okay. And then um, 
And then he decides that he needs to go to the bathroom. Uh, his mom's saying, you okay in there? I'm a big boy, as what most four or five year olds would say. Uh, so then he's sitting on the toilet, and then he pulls out a diary. The, uh, the hypervision diary is what it says. He says, you know, Gasai, this one's going to be hard. Think, oh, that wasn't an accident. He tried to kill her. He's a diary user. Okay. So, we don't know his number, but he's one of the diary users. And, um, it's a child. Think about the challenges that are going to come from that. How are they going to, how is Yuki going to convince his mom that, hey, this kid tries to kill us. Oh, he's just a five-year-old. Like, yeah, but <laughs> once he drops the act, he's frightening. He's a frightening little child. Um, so yeah, you had that moment. You had Yuno seen in the bathroom, and there was one that I forgot to mention. After uh, Yuno, after Yuki and Yuno went to bed, and um, she's laying there and, and saying, um, Yuki's mom is so great. And to think that I would have to get rough with her and looking over at this bag that's just full of knives and weapons. Uh, that was another scene that just sticks with you. Like, whoa. So yeah, she's... She was normal. She was normal for most of the episode and it was really adorable in a lot of ways. She was just acting like a regular girl who was excited to meet her not quite boyfriend's mother. But the scene in the bathroom and then the scene where they were in the same room together in bed, kinda in bed. He was in bed, she was on the floor. That, those two moments are what I would call the highlights of that episode. The, it, it was not, it was not very action-packed. Um, in fact, it, it mostly focused on Yuki and Yuno and his mom and then the kid at the end, like ninth, barely made an appearance, and that was the only diary user. I don't even think we saw fourth in that episode. Um, so that was that was that episode. It was well, it was a it was a setup episode. It, it was setting up for the battle with his next diary user. That that's pretty much what it boils down to. Kind of like how episode. Four was kind of the setup for episode five. Episode six is kind of the setup to episode seven, and um, where we're gonna we're gonna be facing off with a child. So who's gonna win? Two fourteen-year-olds or a very smart five-year-old? Or should I put it this way? Um, a cowardice fourteen-year-old who cowers behind a pink-haired girl a super psychotic pink-haired girl that wants to kill everybody except for said pathetic 14-year-old boy or the five-year-old that wants to kill both of them and might have possibly seen you know murder his parents who knows but uh, we'll find that out in the next episode uh, then was the murmur moments, and what was going on there? My apologies. Camera shut off. Okay, murmur moments. Um, okay, so <laughs> you have murmur, and she is uh, disguised as Yuno in this little bit. And the thing I thought was funny is uh, Yuki's mom didn't notice the difference. That she went from being, say, this tall to this tall. I know you can't see my hand, but going from uh, the size of a teenager to the size of a toddler, basically. She even gets down on her knees, basically, to like her level, so that way she can talk to uh, this you know murmur. I'll call her humor <laughs> for this. Uh, yeah, that sounds better than Murno. That works too. What do you guys think? Humor or Murno? Anyway, uh, and, and Murmur wants to get the um, the secret family Amino recipe to miso soup. And uh, 
uh, Yuki's mom saying, ah, okay, well, you need three ingredients. Okay, what are the three ingredients? Okay, so you need uh, purified water. The second thing, I didn't really catch what it was, but it was fish-related. And then uh, soybeans that you would move heaven and earth for. And so then Murmur takes all these literally and climbs up a glacier to get water that hadn't been soiled by human hands for 10,000 years. She literally pulls a fish out of the ocean and digs for uh, the soybeans. Uh, so she was literally moving earth for these. Uh, and uh, Yuki's mom says, wow, even my ex-husband couldn't have made this. And he, even my ex-husband could have made this. And he's a, a disaster in the kitchen. Uh, a little jab at uh Yuki's father that we haven't met yet. We have seen a photograph of the family, so we know what he looks like, but we don't know who he is exactly. Anyway, um, Yuki's mom gets a phone call, and so she leaves the room, leaving Murmur alone. And um, so Murmur starts uh, making this miso soup and accidentally pours uh, too much of this thing in. Okay, so I'm going to throw in some salt, and that'll counteract that. Oh, oh no, and then the lid fell off, so all the salt spills in there. Okay, I'm going to put some of this in here that's going to counteract that, and pff, drops the bottle in there, and uh, then you're watching the, the steam, or whatever, turn like a bluish purple color. So, it's pretty much now poison. Uh, so Yuki's mom comes to take a sip of it, Next thing you see is a hospital taking her away. And... No, I'm sorry. She makes her try the soup, and then she was sent away, and then she puts in all the stuff to try to make her feel better by throwing in extra salt, extra this, extra that, and makes the situation worse. That's what causes the poison. My, my bad. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and then you have uh, Yuki walk in the kitchen. Oh, uh, mom was making dinner. Okay. So then he takes off the lid of this bowl or uh, this, uh, what would that be, a, a pot, I guess. Uh, and, uh, I don't even think he takes a sip of it. He just takes off the lid, and then you see an ambulance taking him away. And that's how that episode ends, the murmur moment. I don't know how they didn't realize that that was not the real you know. That was humor. Murno. Um, something else that uh, caught my eye in this episode that I forgot to mention was Murmur and Deus were taking bets on who would win. I think that was in this past episode. They're all starting to run together now. Uh, but they were talking about that it might be a while before more diary users take each other out so Deus might have to wait a little bit and then I noticed some cracks appearing on his fingers so I thought, ooh okay so is Deus' time uh, starting to uh, approach? yeah um, so that was that episode and like I said, I, I enjoyed that one a lot better than the fifth episode. Because there were was, there were some issues with it. But overall, it was an enjoyable episode. And definitely leaves you hanging with what's going to happen with this five-year-old child. But enough on that, because I've been talking for over 20 minutes. You might as well just watch the entire episode. And that tells you everything that I have to say. <laughs> These are supposed to be short, maybe 10-minute vlogs, not 22-minute vlogs. Uh, so I'll catch you in the next vlog episode, and we'll find out what happens next. Catch you then.